studies show that no progress has been made in closing the gender divide in the workplace. After four years of research, studies find that women remain underrepresented at every level. Today I'm here to talk to two of our industry leaders about what we can do to help close the gender divide. I'm here with Brian Stoffers of CBRE and Byron Boston of Dynex Capital. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. I'm going to start um, at the beginning. So, Brian, tell me, was there anything that happened in the workplace that influenced your views on gender and gender equality? Uh, the, there has been. It's evolved over time. But what we started observing relatively early on is our customer base, our client base, uh, was changing. And we were not reflecting that client base. Uh, there were both uh, diverse uh, clients in the workforce that we were working with, and there were uh, many more females that we were working with. And, and our workforce did not reflect that. I, I do know, because I have some friends um, that work for CBRE, you do have a women's network and CBRE puts a lot of investment in making sure that you provide opportunities for growth for women. Do you want to talk a little bit about sure. that? We've made, I think, significant progress over the last dozen years or so in that, um, in that area. And if you look at some of our top performers, whether they be sales, leasing, uh, debt professionals, they're female. So we feel really good about the progress we've made. We need to make a lot more progress, uh, particularly in the leadership areas, although we have now named um, some very top level females in the leadership positions, the leadership ranks of CBRE. Additionally, our board has changed. The last six board seats were filled with diverse candidates, three of which were women. So I think we are making progress, but it's a very diligent, deliberate effort that we're making to get there. And Byron, I know your personal story, but not everybody who's going to watch this knows your personal story. You had women in your life as you were growing up. As a matter of fact, you said you were raised by many strong women. Can you tell us a little bit about how you were raised? Sure. I've got, I grew up with, uh, surrounded by probably six or seven women on a daily basis. And um, the, uh, uh, it's, all sisters in my home and my oldest sister who lived nearby had three daughters so and we all went to school together and we all grew up together and um, so in the house was just my dad and I but for the most part on a day-to-day -day basis my interaction with another human being from a young age happened to be females and I've just realized as I gotten older the impact of that it's been positive. Do you think that influenced the way you view women in the workplace? It does. When I look back historically from the moment I started in 1981, um, my interaction with women, and this is only me looking back in hindsight and evaluating, was very different th than several of the other men that I worked with. Um, Brian, what words of advice can you give leaders, male or female, that are trying to make an impact within their own organizations? I think you have to be very deliberate about your actions and your intentions. And I think when there's a real focus, a real spotlight put on uh, hiring diverse candidates and bringing more women into leadership roles, uh, things happen. But without that attention, without that, that focus, it's really hard to move the needle. So purposeful set up metrics, do you think that's a good way? We measure them. Every year we measure them and we, we watch our progress or, or lack thereof. Um, but the needle does begin to move with enough effort in time. Yeah. And Byron, you and I were just talking about the fact that you sit down and have conversations with the women at all different levels within Dynex, Dynex to have a better understanding. How frequently do you do that and what do you do with the information you get from the women in your organization? It's really, from my perspective, it's a, it's a natural process. So I understand it isn't necessarily with everyone. And I also understand that every man is not like myself who's grown up with women. So it's almost a natural process with me. But, but I too, just like you said, I've become more deliberate because I've realized that everyone didn't grow up like Byron. So we, as a leader, I have to be more deliberate in trying to identify amongst the people that work for me um, who might not have the same knowledge or experience that I actually have. So I've had these conversations with multiple women throughout the organization. 
Um, I will continue to do so. I always love the opportunity to have this conversation because I always go back and ask the same questions again. I just check in. Um, I started to bring, broaden that conversation with some other males in the office. And I've also started to, in our, in our all staff meetings, actually make it a priority to say, you know what, everyone has an equal right in this workplace. And if you have any other views in your personal life that differ from that, you have no right to bring that into the workplace. So that's at the top. It's like Brian said, it's, it's saying, I want to be more deliberate. Um, but there is a certain part of this that is part of my personality from having grown up with all women and grown up with a lot of strong women who just really did not believe in this inequality just as a, a natural course of life. I know we all agree that diversity of thought and diversity of perspective, just as you're raising, really increases effectiveness in any management team, whether it's middle management or senior management. I always ask the question, what can organizations do to fill the pipeline with diversity? And so we can have that diversity of thought. Any specific ideas? I think it starts at the, the ground level and, and it's providing learning and training development programs that encourage women's participation in these programs and then you watch them rise up the ranks. And we've, we have really good experience with that um, methodology of bringing them in at the, at the early levels, at the beginning of their careers, and providing that training and development, and uh, basically putting some sunlight and some uh, fertilizer and watching it grow. Well, and also I think giving women the feedback they need to grow. If there are areas, and I was surprised to learn that sometimes men are hesitant to give women the feedback they need. So yes. have you ever had you that need experience? need the feedback. And I think of myself as a football player, where I had some great coaches who immediately, in the game of football, especially in practice, they're ripping you apart, they giving you wait. feedback. They didn't wait, right? They didn't wait. And so you become better because they gave you the feedback. Sure. That feedback is really important. I experienced it as an African-American, and I can sense it now. I can tell when there's someone who's intimidated of me, as a, whether it's an African-American, or whether it's because I'm a football player, maybe I'm larger than, whatever the reason happens to be, they're not saying, they're not giving me the feedback that I really want, so I want to get it out of them. I'd love to see women understand that sometimes they may try, they may have to try to take a leadership role in getting that feedback. Pursuing it more. Pursuing yeah. it more, yeah. Yeah. because they need the feedback, yeah. otherwise you don't get better. Yeah. You don't get better, you don't get yeah. better. Well, both of you are shining examples, and I so appreciate your being here and the work you're doing to help women advance in their careers. But I would be remiss if I didn't end with Brian or with Byron's cell phone. If anyone wants to know if this is a man who not only supports women but can rock the pink case, you do it well. Thank you both for being here. All right, thanks, Monica. Uh.